Hey, Coach. Uh, Dalton Pence, Cardinal Sports Zone. Um, you talked uh, to me about a month ago about how this was perhaps the most difficult strength of schedule that you've had in your tenure here at Louisville. How do you feel like this gauntlet, so to speak, has kind of prepared you all for you know looking forward to this tournament? Yeah, absolutely. I've always uh, thought to be the best, you've got to play the best. Um, and certainly uh, our schedule this year and, um, you know, even some of our opponents that haven't been as good in the past have have, have stepped up their level as well. So um, there's no doubt um, not only the ACC competition once we got into that schedule, but our non-conference opponent as well, it has set us up for um, success for the NCAA tournament. Hey, Justine, it's Jody Dumbling with Cardinal Authority. You, you knew... I think you knew going into last weekend, obviously you were going to make the field, but still it's so difficult in your sport to see your name called on that Sunday night. What what did it feel like still when 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 you got in? Yeah, def definitely a little different this year. When we, I remember uh, when we won the regular season against Syracuse a few weeks earlier, we had a, a senior uh, celebration. And normally at those celebrations, we're still wondering, hang on a minute, we're still going to be a bubble team, but we were confident that we we're going to make the tournament. Um, we were probably more interested about who we were going to match up with and also if we were going to be able to host. Because when you go undefeated in the ACC, um, surely that you you would success, set yourself up to become a host site. So we were very interested in that piece. Obviously, um, not winning our semi-final round and the Big Ten having a successful season um, in a, a little bit deeper, we knew that it was going to be pretty tight. So we knew we were going to be in, um, but it, we were just very interested about if we were going to host and who our matchup would be. Speaking of that matchup, what do you, what what can you tell us about the matchup that you have this uh, this Friday? Yeah, that was very interesting. I um, we know a lot about them now because over the last two days we've watched a lot of hockey. But in that moment, I was like, well, this is going to be interesting. We know nothing about them at all. We obviously know that they're a great team um, and have had a fantastic year. Um, you know, as we've uh, evaluated their film. Um, I think it will be a, a pretty good matchup. I think they're definitely um, more individualistic than some of the teams that we've played against. They're very, t they've um, a lot of international experience, a lot of senior experience, and so it's going to be about taking care of those individual players and certainly not giving up penalty corners because um, they've got a great penalty corner unit. Um, and then, um, you know, when I think about last week, we need to defend. We need to work harder to defend and then play Louisville field hockey. But how they play, there's zero excuse for us not to be able to play our style, which that's a great thing. Coach, you bring back nine members of that starting 11 from a team that made the Final Four for the first time in program history. What, you know, how how is it to have that experience that has gone deep in the tournament when you are not hosting this year? So you're having to, you know, play up in Michigan. What's, what's that experience like to be able to go into a hostile environment like that? Yeah, no, it should um, be really great for us. And then when you make that comparison against a Harvard team that hasn't played, um, the last, obviously, they didn't play last year. In the previous few years, Princeton got that automatic bid. So, um, even though that team is experienced with their seniority, um, they do not have that NCAA experience, nor even tournament experience, because they don't have a um, a tournament to compete for with the Ivy League. So, um, I think given those two situations um, or circumstances, that it should bode very well to us. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's automatically going to happen. Um, we actually need to work very hard together in order for it to, to happen. But, yeah, we've, we've had great experience the last couple of years, and we definitely are a lot deeper this year as well, um, which could be an advantage. Justine, does it, make a, does it make a difference that you've actually played there once, I mean, earlier in the year at, at, at that facility? Does that, does that help at all? Uh, we actually um, don't like to play up there, to be honest. It's a different surface. It's more challenging um, to play our passing game. The ball bounces around a lot more. Uh, it's it's less fluid. 
Um, yeah, I was a, up at Syracuse last weekend. It was similar. It was colder. The turf was dry. It was bouncy. Um, I think the advantage is we know it's going to be that way and we just we can't do anything about it. So just embrace it. Um, expect the expected and uh, yeah, do your best, get over mistakes and get on with it. Hey, Coach, Daniel Rankin with the Louisville Cardinal. Congrats on a great season so far. Uh, obviously, we're speaking to Maddie next. Uh, how would you evaluate her season uh, along with Katie Schneider's season uh, with the team leading goals? Yeah, um, you know, if I if I think back to last year and then going into this year, um, when when you lose Meg Schneider and Mercedes Pastor, and I believe it was like 47% of our scoring and so I really didn't know how the season was going to pan out for us um, from an attacking side of things. Um, Maddie Tabor in particular, what I'm so proud of is to see her going from that first weekend where um, she had that unfortunate and significant injury and, and seeing when we were going back to back seasons and seeing her on the sideline rehabbing uh, day after day all throughout the summer and preparing herself for the preseason. It just really, I'm just a, a big proud coach of what she's had to endure to get back onto the field in the condition that um, she is currently in. I mean, she's a worker. Um, she definitely uh, provides a lot of uh, defensive effort, but she also really wants to be um, part of our attacking unit as well. You know, sometimes she probably works a little bit too hard. <laughs> um, you know, she could work a little smarter, but she's team first all the way. She fits very well in with um, what we're trying to do um, from the attack point of view. Um, and she's come up clutch um, in, in key situations, whether it's a, a you know a game-winning goal or on a rebound on a corner. So I couldn't be more proud of her. And similarly, Katie, she's got a nose for the goal. Uh, she gets herself in the right positions. Um, but certainly we need – we've not generated as much attack in recent weeks. Um, we're playing against great opponents, but hopefully we can generate a little bit more this weekend. Hey, Coach, uh, just J.L. Carvin from the Courier-Journal. Uh, you've only had one overtime loss this season, and you just touched on your experience a little bit earlier. In what ways have you seen that experience help you out this season, especially in those tight games late? Okay. I actually consider our game against UVA not an overtime loss. <laughs> uh, we lost in a shootout. So I'm going into overtime. Um, we're very confident. Uh, I love what we've done this year with the different system that we've played. Um, we definitely go a lot deeper as well within overtime. Um, positionally. Uh, so, um, you know, unfortunately against UVA, we were unable to uh, put one on the board, but I think that on attack and defence, we we handled the situation very nicely. Um, yeah, I'd say whether it's full field overtime or the that experience going into NCAA tournament, it absolutely is an advantage. Hey, Coach. Um, go ahead, Jody. We talked about this earlier in the year. How when you're playing a team that you're playing for the first time, they're right now scouting you and you have so many players that can score. How much of an advantage is that for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. I guess when you, um, when you scout opponents, typically you're going to, when we think of Harvard, you know, we're naming, um, you know, number three, number eight, number 10, number 12. Um, yeah. I, I think it will be quite hard to scout, um, us from an attacking point of view, maybe an Amy Plum, um, they might take a look at just from what she's able to do on the ball. But in terms of scoring threats, yeah, I think we've just shared the load and we've shared the responsibility. Um, typically, as the season's gone on, if we've had one or two players that have had maybe a down game, others have stepped up. Um, but, you know, if we're going to be successful against Harvard, we have to put them under pressure. We have to step up our press and our defending so we can have better counterattacking opportunities. And just this past week, and certainly it, it has happened against new opponents that we don't know much about, you can be tentative and not have a go. Like, just wait, little cat and mouse. Uh, we cannot do that. We have to have a go at them from the get-go, put them under pressure um, that they've perhaps not seen before, and then that that's when we're our best when we attack. 
Hey, Coach, this senior class on senior day became the all-time winningest class in program history with 59 wins. Obviously, the opportunity to still get some more um, in the NCAA tournament. When you talk about you know this program, you know, ex you know, seemingly reaching new heights, you know, getting further in the tournament. Um, how pivotal and instrumental has this particular senior class been in kind of you know getting to this point? Yeah, um, one of the greatest uh, joys for me as a coach is reflecting usually around this time of the year or on senior day or at a banquet where you you take a look at that class or those uh, as individuals from when you recruited them to exiting the program. I mean, obviously, you've got Ali Bidding, who's a fifth year senior, and then the actual seniors themselves. Um, you know, some of them had rough starts, to be honest, as freshmen. Um, but when you talk about collectively and being the, the winningest class, what did happen to them in their freshman year is they missed out on the NCAA tournament. Um, they, you know, a lot of freshmen don't understand um, how difficult it is to make a tournament. And so they don't value every opponent. And so I think this senior class in particular, um, they have valued that and they know how important every single game is. And so I think that leadership or that knowledge has helped them be very successful uh, this year and certainly in the, the previous couple of years. And looking for Go ahead. Go ahead. No, man, go ahead. And looking at it from a different angle, you've got some younger players on the team as well, including your goalkeeper, Nyla. Uh, how has she performed this year and, and uh, all of the newcomers on the team? The newcomers, um, some of them have had a, a bit of a rough start, just uh, unfortunate injuries and so forth. Um, the two freshmen that have played is obviously our goalkeeper, Miela, and then uh, Philippa, who's come on on the striker line. It's always an adjustment. Uh, it's a ju you know, when you come from overseas, you typically train once or twice a week. Um, it's, it's pretty casual. Like this is on a whole nother level of intensity um, and pressure. And, you know, you know, to be perfectly honest, it's taken a little bit of time um, uh, every day at practice to be consistent and to the level that what we expect. Uh, but what's impressive is just on game day, um, I guess the experience um, and, and the talent has shown through. So Mila's clearly, she's a gamer. She's had a great year. Um, she's been very, very impressive. Um, she's one of the best goalkeepers in the country. So um, we definitely got, got lucky there. Um, and Philip is growing more and more um, every day. And so I would expect big things from her in years to come. So just I just have one more talking, you know, about that loss in the ACC semis. You know, th this seems like a team that, that you know, does a good job of staying ground and never getting too high, never getting too low. Is Does it make the team hungrier now that, you know, you, you do kind of take one on the chin in the ACC semis after – you know, winning all six matches in the regular season? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, when we were matched up with UVA, it was a little bit of a danger game for us. I thought, I, I believe we may have beaten them about five games in a row over the last two or three years. Um, that's unheard of in the ACC. Usually you go back and forth. And so, I, you know, at some point you were going to take a loss. I'd much rather in that game than now going on into the NCAA tournament where you're one and done. Uh, UVA was definitely hungrier than us. They they were playing for something because if they didn't win it, they probably weren't going to make the NCAA tournament. So they were first to the ball. They worked harder defensively um, and we were definitely more reactive. Yeah, like I said, much rather take a loss and uh, that just wakes us up a little bit, show a little bit of video of what we didn't do well and um, it's full steam ahead for this weekend. They're, our team's pretty pumped up and excited to compete. Anything else for Coach? That's all, all I have. Thanks so much, Justine. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Coach. You. Thank you, everyone.